Now, you, uh, as a young lady, you, uh, of course, uh, went, went through high school. Did you have any aspirations to, uh, to be a teacher? Or I did teach one year. You did? Mm -hmm. And uh, would you share how that came to pass? Well, we went to normal school over here for six weeks. Then you could be a teacher. Uh -huh. And then I was a teacher for one year. And the next year I was way back in. And I got such homesick and then I wouldn't stay. So I only taught one year. I came home. In other words, you went away from home. Was that the mm -hmm. first time in your life you had been away from home? Yeah. And you boarded with some strange yes. family? Yes. And had homesick? Yeah. And gave up teaching and came back home? Yes. And worked in a shirt which would have been your brother's factory? Yes. And then you met your husband yes. and got married. Yes. And uh, I guess you continued to work, though, off and on after that, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. We farmed, and we moved to town then in 33 off the farm. And then I worked for 20 years. After that? Yes. 1953, then my sister got sick, and I took care of her. I quit, and I didn't go back to work anymore. Uh, the house you're presently living in, you and Ralph built that, didn't yes. you? Yes. Mm -hmm. What year did you build that? 1938's when we moved there. Well, didn't you build the house? We started it in 1936, and it took till 1938 that we had it finished. That and then in 38 you moved in. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, uh, Harold Hassinger's fruit house next door, yes. that was there when you came? or? No, he built that afterwards, a couple years afterwards. So uh, in 1938, you, by the way, are the oldest uh, uh, living resident in that whole section of town. Yes. Uh, and you've been living at that same spot continuously since 1938. Yes. The neighborhood has changed many times. Uh, I know there was all, there was one, my grandparents had the house next to you. Yes. Then... Uh, was Russell Bumfer's uh, planing mill in at that time? He just built it at that time, before, just a, couple, a year or so before that. Yeah, and then other than that, it was vacant land except where Ralph Neff lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, except for the Amots, of course, and Mary Young's, or who was it, Mrs. Thomas owned the property out yes. from you? Yes, that was a school. That, that was a high school at one time? Yes. Yes, for the Beaver Town area. I took my test in there to go to high school. Did you really? Yeah. But that was a high school. You took your test to go to high school, mm -hmm. but then they changed the high school from there up to above where the bank is now. Yes. Uh, when you were a very young lady, who were some of the shopkeepers in Beaver Town? Well, Will Keller had the store here. That, uh, in this building where yeah, we're meeting tonight? On this, yeah, on, this, on that side the store was. Will this, Keller? This, yeah, this was a living quarters. Right. And uh, What did he sell? He sold ice cream. He made his own. He, I would bring him the milk. We had cows. And then I'd bring him the milk when I went to school. Hmm. And then... No, you know of Doc Strawhecker? Yeah, he, he, lived he right was next there. door, right? Then I'd bring a pint of milk along for her. When I go to school, I delivered milk to them. Oh, in a tin? Uh, in tin, a bucket. In a bucket. Yeah, they furnished the buckets, and then I'd bring it along. And then he made ice cream, and he sold candy and crackers and sugar, flour, and things like that. And then they roasted their own peanuts. Uh huh. After he didn't have the store, then Tom Kohler had it. Right. And he roasted his peanuts too. Then up where the flower shop is, then uh, I think Ryan's had store. Uh huh. And down where the drugstore is, Schwartz's had store. Then Charles Mattern's had store. And then Ed Rhodes was in. And then Ira Lepley. Mm -hmm. And Ira Lepley, of course, is the infamous teacher who licked Clarence Bailey. Yeah. He later became a storekeeper here yeah. in Beavertown. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, down at the, there where the post office was, Link Freed had a grocery store. Uh, Ed Freed's mother, Mary uh -huh. Freed's step uh, mother-in-law. Right. 
And then later on, there was a clothing store in there. Mm -hmm. And then later on, the Wise store was in. Wise Pure Food store. And then Bill Saylor, no, George Diebler, and Mrs. Fulmer had a restaurant in there. Right. A loaf of bread, a pound of meat, and all the mustard you could eat was yeah. his slogan. Right. <laughs> and uh, then Bill Moyer was in the butcher shop. Uh -huh. Once Kaufman's. Uh, right. Bill Moyer. Who took that over? By Frank Schwartzlander. For Frankie Schwartzlander, and then Mr. Kaufman took it over from mm -hmm. the Schwartzlanders. And then down here, where Charles Mattern lives, there, Aaron Musser lived, he had a butcher shop down there. Where Charles Mattern lives now? Yeah. Aaron Musser lived there. And where, what, where is this? I'm where they're down from the hotel, down along the railroad. Oh, oh. There was a butcher shop along the railroad. No, huh? it was down along the road here. Oh, down along, uh, mm -hmm. that would be what? The Chestnut, Chestnut Street. Chestnut Street, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. And what other stores were in town? Where was the post office when you were a little well, girl? Up where Clarence Smithles was that little house there. Oh, yeah, we do have a picture same, of that. Uh, yeah, same we, Wetzel had it, same have, Speaks grandfather. Right, we do have a, a postcard of, of that uh, particular building, right. And then at one time it was over here in this yellow, this small building where Marion Snook lives. Where's that? Why, well, right here is... Near us? Yes, mm -hmm. over here, right. That they're presently remodeling. Yeah. Uh, are they? Put in siding on. Well, that's where... We, there that was, was a post office at one time. It was at one, one time. time. Uh -huh. And then... Uh, up where, who lives there now? On this side of Randall Hassinger. Reno oh, Hassinger. No, she's talking about a building, that house. That's one of the sailor's boy, one of Bill Sailor's no, boys. No, he doesn't live there no more. Somebody oh. else took over. But Scott next to Randall was, Hassinger. Yeah, that was a, like a double house at one time. There was two doors in. Uh -huh. And on this side was a post office, and this side Jake Aigler lived. Uh -huh. Uh, and then up where uh, Mrs. Ernest had it, there were Rudy, where Carmen O'Mill was in. Uh huh. And then they moved it down to where Jerry Wagner lives, and then they moved it down to the corner. Well, it was actually in at Barner Ryan's there for quite a while first, before it was moved to where Jerry Wagner lives. Oh, that's right. It was in there. When the, when the bars were closed mm -hmm. or something, why they converted one of the rooms of... Uh, uh, what is now the hotel, or yeah. was the hotel, mm -hmm. and then it went to Jerry Wagner's, then it went down to the Wise Pure Food Stores, mm -hmm. which you had mentioned earlier, and then it was in the Borough Building for a couple of months, and finally settled into a home of its own temporarily. Uh, I mean, it will, probably in another 50 years it'll be someplace else. But uh, were there any other stores in town when you were a youngster? No, that's all I can remember. Later on, then, in life, uh, Burns Tobias had, out there where Jerry Arndt lives, he mm -hmm. had like a five and ten in there for mm -hmm. a while. But that was after I was older, I believe it was after I was married. Mm -hmm. That would have been... Uh, and then Charles Bubbs had the, up there that restaurant, but oh, that, yeah. that was afterwards, too. Really? Yeah. That would have been after the 1920s, and uh, that... Oh, that would have been in, uh, when was that, about 1930 or 40? 30s. 30s, 1930. He, of course, made his own homemade ice cream. Yes. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that was an important place in Beaver Town, second only, really, to uh, Mel Bubbs, Charlie Walker's, Clarence mm -hmm. Bailey's restaurant up here on the square. Well, Ira Haynes had that before. Mel Bubb was in. Right, right. Ira Haynes, and then Mel Bubb, and then I guess Fitzgerald took it over from Bubb, and then mm -hmm. Charlie Walkers took it over from Fitzgerald, and then Mr. and Mrs. Bailey took it over from Sarah Walker, and then it was closed for a short while. My dad had a fruit stand in for one season or so, but then it became a very important part of Beavertown in the form of the bank right now, and the bank's celebrating their 10th anniversary this month, First National Trust Bank. I imagine it'll be there for quite a while. Uh, did you uh, have uh, parties where young boys and girls would go out? Uh, 
ice skating or snow riding or we anything? Went, we went to sledding parties once in a while. How did that work? Oh, well, we'd get in a sled and they'd take us one time. We went to Troxville. All the way to Troxville in a sled? In a big sled. Uh-huh. How Jay, many? Jay Schrader and Clarence Thomas took us with the horses in the sled. Oh, there was a dozen or more. We were over to Fred's Blees. Uh-huh. And when we came to go home, we couldn't find the sled. We had to wait till daylight. Why couldn't you find the, the sled? The three fellows from over there hid the sled. In Trockleville? Yeah, back over here, back at the Methodist Church. George Joker and Spence Bingaman and I forget who the other one was. They had hid the sled. We'd go out and hunt for it. And then some would come back and then others would go out and hunt. And we just couldn't find it. So you had to wait till the next day. It was 10 o'clock in the next Saturday morning when we got home. <laughs> Everybody was worried. They didn't know what happened. We couldn't phone, you know, people didn't have phones in. That's right. And then we were up over from McClure. There's a brick house now. It used to be a wood house, her wooden house. Hurley Snooks lived there. We were up there to a sledding party. Huh. And we were down here. Um, where Herman Renningers lived there, you know, where Walter has that rubbish where he lived, you know, everything looks... Yeah, and the dips. There was a big house there. Renningers lived there. Uh-huh. No, I don't know who lived... Beacos lived there. And then we were there to a sledding party. And different times we went out like that. I just can't remember where all we went. Do That's you remember the Fantastics when they oh, would parade yes. on New Year's mm-hmm. Day? They, they came from Benford and they'd put their horses in our barn down here. See, we moved down here, then we're aside of the fire hall, where mm-hmm. Raymond Coons lived, mm-hmm. and there was a barn. Mm-hmm. I was 13 when we moved there. And then when they come over, they put the horses in the barn there. Well, didn't they actually ride on horseback yes, during their them, parade? Uh, well, I don't know if they paraded. They just drove over here, and some were on horseback, and then some were in a big sled. Mm-hmm. Were they pretty wild, or...? Uh, yeah, they... Uh, they jump around and act a fool. Uh-huh. And one fella didn't have no hand, and they wanted me to shake hands with them, and I didn't know it. Here it was just a stub. So I shook hands with them. I didn't see it till afterwards. Well, I, you mean he extended his hand to shake hands with yeah. you? Mm-hmm. And he didn't have no hand? No. Huh. Now, was that for real, or...? Yes, that was real. It was a stub there, you know, uh-huh. just here. Where it was amputated. Mm-hmm. Do uh, you know who that was from Benford? That would have been amputated, had an amputated hand. Oh, yeah. Great granddad, but Danny Hatton was an old man. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, Swarmer. Mm-hmm. What was his first name? Him. Swarmer. Swarmer. George Lippert, huh? Got his hands all over the cross-cutting wood with a 